that's what we're making today. It's not hard. Boy, it is delicious. Well, hello and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making some green chili beef, all right? This is a braised green chili beef that I decided, oh, that sounds so good. I think I'm going to make that. So I don't know if there's a recipe out there like this. I'm sure somebody's done something similar. But today, I just decided, hey, I'm going to take a big chunk of beef. I'm going to cook it with a bunch of green chilies, in this case, poblanos. And I'm going to make something really good tasting. Now, maybe, who knows, maybe later on today, I do tacos with it. I might just do the beef with whatever sauce I make. But I'm thinking that what I cook the beef in should become some sort of a sauce. Beautiful green chilies, simple ingredients, delicious flavors. So come on over. We're going to look at what we have here and get started making this. And there's just not a lot to it. This is braising. Braising has been long considered the king of cooking and it brings out flavors and textures unlike no other way of cooking. So come on over and let's get busy. Come on. Oh, there is one thing. Please look in my description box right underneath here. That has my links to my website and that's where you're gonna get the recipes in written form, they're in PDF format. Also, I have other merch there. I've got my shirts and caps. There's also some other uh, things there like my prints. So please take a look at all of that and thank you. Uh, also, I have Patreon and Wissio. If you wish to help out with Texas cooking today, it would be appreciated. And folks, thank you very much. Now come on over, let's get going. All right, now looky there. So what I have here is a rump roast. Sometimes I'll call this top round. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of different names for it, but basically it's the hind leg of the cow. And uh, we've just taken a slice out of that. And I've got about four and a half pounds here. I've also got five large, pardon my oven. I've got five large poblanos here and some wine and some salt. So with this, we're gonna make a beautiful, beautiful braised beef. This is not hard, but certain things like that dirt that's on my chilies, I need to wash that off and get these things cut up. This I'm just gonna break up into some large pieces, similar to the way we would braise, um, let's say like a, a, a beef bourguignon, um, but I won't be doing it the same way. We're gonna do this a little bit easier. All right. Do believe it's time to get busy here. First thing I want to do is just get a little bit of oil in the bottom of my pot. I do that just to cut down on anything sticking, which almost never happens when you're braising. But this is just habit, so I do it all the time. Now on my meat, nothing special here. I just want some big chunks, all right? There we go. Looks like one good big chunk right there. Another one's right there. Isn't that simple? <laughs> right in there. Okay. So as you can see, I'm not trimming anything off, keeping all of the fat. As far as I'm concerned, every bit of that is flavor, okay? There we are. Now I need to move right on to my chilies. Alrighty, went ahead and gave those a nice rinse. Now on these, we're doing nothing special here. If you want to remove some of that stem, you can, because it's not gonna do you any good in there. But the chilies themselves, I'm using pretty much all of it. These would be wonderful as stuffed chilies, because they are so big and thick. I mean, look how thick the meat is on that. It is a really good quality chili. Now, when I'm doing these, all I'm gonna do is just split them, nothing more. All right, now, chilies right down there in the beef. Take a look at my pot here. All right. That does look good, doesn't it? Shoving chilies down in there. 
Don't worry, these are going to kind of cook down and soften. They'll be just fine. Now I want to put my wine in this. Now, braising is quite literally cooking in liquid. So in addition to that, I want some water too. Now, and generally when I'm braising, I'll bring the liquid about halfway up on the meat. And that's about where we're at right now. Okay, now next thing, I want some salt down in this. I want about a nice teaspoon of salt in there. All right, that's ready for the oven. All right, that's all loaded and ready to go. The oven's hot. <laughs> now, from there, it's just a matter of go and do something else. When you're bracing, it's slow cooking, folks. This is not fast. Uh, and yes, you can do this in a slow cooker, all right? It should work out just fine in a crock pot or something like that. Um, might take a little bit longer, I'm not sure. I don't use crock pots. I always braise in the oven. All right, now I'm braising today at 325 degrees, which is a little high for braising. That's not a big deal. I generally turn up the temperature on a rump roast if I'm wanting to get it fork tender. Rump roast is nice if you want a real thin carving beef, but it has a tendency to be difficult to get soft when you're cooking it this way. So you have to be patient. It will get tender. And when it does, it's gonna be delicious. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking later on, I might be hungry for tacos. <laughs> oh, it's ready. I checked it just a little bit ago to make sure and it was coming right along. It was just about where I wanted it. So now I'm just going to pull the beef out of here, get it on a plate, get all the juices and the chilies into this. My, uh, um, this is my food meal. And then we're going to be up and running. This isn't hard. Uh, oh, hey, take a look at this. It's really good. There we go. All right. So what we've got is just a big old pot of delicious going on. This meat is starting to come apart. You know, when I take it, I can very easily just tear it apart like that. That's how I know it's ready, okay? So it's what we call fork tender. It'll simply slide off of a fork. Now, get all these out of here. Now, I'm only removing the meat for the sole purpose at this moment of getting it separated from my chilies. The chilies, I'm going to take those. We're going to run them along with all these juices. We'll run it right down through a um, food mill. And the food mill is going to separate out everything for us. It'll take out the seeds. It'll get rid of the skins. It'll leave us with nothing but a beautiful pure sauce. This, if you've never used one before, this is a food mill and these things are worth every bit of time you put into them. Now, my food mill, I'm using the medium size strainer on it, okay? And that's what I want, thought would work best for this particular sauce, because I'm wanting the bulk of everything. I just don't want skins, seeds, stems, or any of that mess, okay? So I'm gonna take this. Now all I have to do is crank the paddle and in a little bit we're going to have a beautiful sauce. I do believe I do want to take this beef, get my hand out of there without burning myself, putting the beef right down in there. That'll keep it warm until I start shredding it. Okay, this, all I have to do is crank my paddle. We're gonna have sauce. And it will only take just a moment because these poblanos are very well cooked. Okay, now for the most part, all I really have left here, skins and seeds. I will 
scrape off the bottom. Get all that beautiful green chili off of there. Yeah, and that's the goodness we're looking for. Okay, let's check this out. This is looking really good. Um, that, okay, needs a little bit of salt. And it could use a little bit of acid. And with this meal, I'm already using lime juice as a component in another part. So a little lime juice is perfect here. Lemon juice would work just as well. I'm gonna bring this to a boil, add in a thickener, and then we're gonna have us a beautiful sauce. So as I wait for this to come up in temperature, I turn my attention to my meat and I can shred that. Okay. So what I want to do now is take my meat. Oh, that looks good. I want to take this stuff and just break it down. And all I have to do, see what I'm doing here? A pair of forks, just go at it and tear that apart. Now fat is your choice. You can leave it in, take it out, Okay, and I will not be judgmental either way, okay? Oh dear, that's so tender. Right there, watch, boom, boom. Tender, right? Uh-huh. Oh, how that is absolutely gorgeous. I wanna get one more piece, uh-huh. absolutely just stellar looking folks <laughs> we got some really tasty looking meat there's only one way to know for sure right mmm oh man that is special a light sprinkling with salt and it's done not much just lightly there it is. All right, now, my sauce here is coming up to a boil. And that's where I need a little of this. So I need to thicken that guy up. I've got about a third of a cup of water. I've just put about maybe three tablespoons of cornstarch in there. Now at first, I'm gonna say this cornstarch just doesn't wanna mix, it kinda clumps on the bottom. Be patient with it, keep pushing it around. It will dissolve. There we go. And I stir it for just a couple of minutes just to make sure. this stirring this in never just pour it in you want to stir it in there it's looking really nice that thickened its attitude up right there beautiful so now we have what we can actually call a real poblano and meat sauce I mean there's there's no beating around that. That's exactly what that is. Uh, and a beautiful one. I'm going to taste this and tell you what I think. Mm. Absolutely magnificent. I'm going to turn my burner down to low. Let that do a low simmer for about 10 minutes. Cover as I get I'll cover this as I go ahead and get the rest of my stuff ready for my tacos. We're ready to go. 
the quantity of everything that we use today starts right here with those beautiful green chilies. I used five large poblanos. Now, uh, weight-wise, I didn't even weigh these, so I don't really know. But you can also use other chilies, such as the, the hatch chili works fine. Um, you can use banana chilies with this. Any kind of a good, thick, robust green chili is going to do good in this dish. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's just that green chili flavor and beef. Uh, so feel free to experiment. Now with my beef, I did four and a half pounds on this recipe. It easily could have done more. And then I used one cup of white wine. I added some water and also salt, just enough to taste, about a teaspoon of salt for this dish. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is good looking beef. Beautiful, braised with green chilies and worth the time. Oh, yeah. All right, now, if you don't have a tortilla warmer, a pair of plates like this, one turned over on the other, makes a beautiful tortilla warmer. A couple of dampened paper towels works wonders, okay? That's all it takes. Now, I'm looking forward to fixing a beautiful, beautiful taco. I need some of my meat here. Uh-huh, oh. No, hold on. Oh, I gotta build this just right. This deserves a little guacamole. A nice little bed of guacamole right down there, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Don't you think that'd be a better way? Now, now let's get some meat on here. Mm-hmm. That beautiful, perfect beef. Oh yeah, now. Now this is where we bring in that wonderful sauce that we made just for this occasion with what came from the beef itself. Top with a little bit of pico de gallo. And right there, ladies and gentlemen, I would say you have something close to perfection. That is what I'm talking about right there. All right. I think I want a few extra cilantro leaves. I absolutely love cilantro. It didn't start that way, no. Cilantro, when the first time I tried it, I didn't really care for it. But the more I had, well, the more I appreciated. Mmm. 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 Oh, wow. Mmm. Oops, I lost an onion. That is fantastic. Oh. I was wanting some shredded beef tacos, and I think I got the best in Texas right here. Mmm. <laughs> Please enjoy this recipe. Hmm. I most certainly will be. It is delicious. Fantastic way to do a roast. Right now, those rump roasts, they're selling that as one of the cheapest cuts. Why not come up with something beautiful like this? So folks, please, you enjoy your beef. Enjoy this recipe. Try my recipes. Link is down below in the description box. Also, check out my Patreon, my Wissio. And folks, if you would, please, you have a good day. Bye-bye.